Hi everybody, Mitch Jackson, Human Social, bringing you the Human Side interviews. Today's guest is a friend of mine, someone who I've gotten to know fairly well over the last couple of years, Ken Lopez, the founder and CEO of A2L Consulting. Hi Ken, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Mitch. Nice to see you. Well, it's good to see you too, and thanks for uh, taking time out to do this interview. One of the things that we're going to be doing, Ken, is I'll be spotlighting a different project or service that I'm involved with before each interview, and this week what we're looking at is Rotary International's efforts to eradicate polio worldwide. It's a 35-year effort that Rotary's been working on, and we're almost there, but not quite there. And uh, our website at our club, it's monarchbeachrotary.club. Is a 24/7 donation website. If people would like to to join and contribute and help us take on polio, uh, that's where you need to go, and that's how we'll make things happen, and we'll make a big change in the world. But Ken, back to you. Thanks for being on the show today, and uh, uh, and all that you do. I've got to tell you something. From the first time I I met you, from the first time I saw one of your marketing pieces. You blew me away. I mean, you guys are doing things at A2L Consulting that no other consulting company in the nation is doing, uh, and I want to tip my hat to you. It's impressive. I, I appreciate that very much. It's been an incredibly fascinating journey to to go down this marketing path where we didn't really do much at all about four years ago, and now we really dominate the space we're in. Can you share with our viewers briefly what AQL Consulting is all about. What do you guys do, uh, and what is your primary focus of, of uh, litigation consulting support? Well, A2L Consulting is, is one of the very top, if not the top, litigation consulting firm nationally. We've certainly been voted that um, consistently about the last three years. The work that we do is generally in support of high-end lawyers involved in sophisticated high-end trials. And our role is to help them win a little bit more predictably and hopefully easily by using tools like mock juries, jury selection, litigation graphics, and other presentation support techniques to really help them use every psychological method that is known to persuade judge and jury to see things our way. What I've seen you do, Ken, is also use some of those same approaches with helping build relationships, helping market your company to lawyers just like me. I'm, I'm approached weekly by different consulting companies for different trial-related needs, and frankly, none of those other companies has stood out in my mind like you in A2L Consulting have stood out over the last couple of years. Let's step back just a bit. What we're talking about, everyone, is A2L Consulting is using inbound marketing. They're using an approach of providing lawyers with outstanding materials for free to help build relationships, to help uh, build trust, and actually to help show your expertise. Some of the stuff you're putting out is top notch. And because of that, relationships are formed. And when a trial lawyer needs a good consulting company to help get ready for trial, a high stakes trial, a high dollar trial, then I'm going to call someone who I feel like I know, who has shown me that they understand and appreciate what I do. And that would be a call to A2L Consulting. So that's kind of what brought us full circle to today's uh, Google Hangout on Air. Am I right, Ken? You're exactly right. And uh, it, you, you have done such a wonderful job articulating the way we've gone about this intentionally. I, I, I'm, I'm hoping my, my staff is tuning in so they can hear and, and be appreciated for what exactly <laughs> we and When you go back to... 2011, I had, a, I had a friend who was telling me, you need to start blogging. And I said, you know, lawyers aren't going to take the time to read articles. These are busy folks who bill by the hour. And uh, I, I, took a, I had, took a leap of faith, um, started using a product called HubSpot, which I swear by. Mm -hmm. uh, and from two, just the quick metric, from 2011, we had about 800 visitors to our website, which at the time I thought was on a monthly basis, which I thought was pretty good. Because you know we only will do four or five transactions a month anyway, so that out of 800 is pretty good. And 
this month, January of, of 2015, we'll have about 20,000 people come to our site. About 2,000 people will download something. Just today, we released a new ebook on voir dire. And, at, and three hours ago, and already 350 people have downloaded it. I, I just, I find that astounding. And boy, boy, was I surprised with those results. Well, and that's why that's why you're on the show because you guys are using social media. You're using inbound marketing marketing techniques the right way. There's a lot of people out there, a lot of professionals telling other people how to go about using inbound marketing, how to use social media. But what I'm seeing with you is here's a real company nationwide at the top of its game doing all of these things the right way. And frankly, if people watching this show pick up tips uh, and learn how you're going about inbound marketing and social media, they can use that in their business. They could, it doesn't have to be a consulting business to do what you're doing. All of your approaches will work in almost any type of service industry. Am I right? I, I think you're exactly right. And I think okay. the mistake a lot of people have made is they hear, oh, well, I've, got, I've got to use social for uh, and social, social networking for marketing. And as a Someone in professional services, it's not at all obvious how one might do that. And I think the reality is that social networking and social tools are simply an amplifier for putting out good information and finding a way to circulate that high quality content that you're able to generate. Because if you don't have high quality content, no amount of social media is going to make a difference for you in the world. And, and that's what knocked my socks off when I saw your stuff. It was high quality content. I took the liberty of printing out some notes of some articles that, that uh, I downloaded and printed out and share with young trial lawyers. Really good articles. Things like, and this will give our listeners an idea of exactly, and viewers an idea of what we're talking about. Uh, a free ebook, a free article entitled, What is Visual per, uh, Persuasion and What Do You Need to Know About It? Another one might be, like it or not, likability counts for credibility in the courtroom. Here's another one. Top 15 litigation ebooks and webinars from the past 12 months. Another one is, five essential elements of storytelling and persuasion. And I could go on and on and on. What's caught my eye with your product, Ken, is that in many of these products, it's just not an article. It's an article with web videos embedded in, with podcasts embedded in. Can you explain to our viewers uh, what I'm referencing and why you go about sharing your material using these different multimedia elements in a single ebook or a single article? Yeah, that's a great question. So we, what I have found uh, over the years, and certainly this applies to the work we do, right? You know, juries are very much uh, visual learners. They, they want to see video. They're, they prefer TV as a medium and the internet, you know, after that. But at the end of the day, what they want to see are pictures flowing in their general direction. Whereas lawyers are very much, you know, love lovers of the written, wor written word and lectures. Uh, so in a courtroom, there's a fascinating dynamic where lawyers want to talk, juries want to see, and our role as an organization has often been to bridge that gap to find a way to, to help these folks communicate better. And this, the exact same thing is true in social media and putting out content to the marketplace. Different people want to see different kinds of content. And some people are comfortable uh, interacting on a LinkedIn group. Uh, other people really want Twitter and, and they want to have their information come in via Twitter. And it's our role to deliver up a whole variety of methods um, for people to be able to consume our content. And video, we think, is very likely going to be the dominant mechanism going forward. Uh, for now, though, uh, we see just as much in interest in video as we do the written work uh, in, in terms yeah. of the kind of folks who consume our content. But all are critical. Well, I'll get a product uh, that you may refer to as an ebook. The first paragraph is the written word. After the first paragraph, there might actually be a, a video embedded in your product for, for me to click on and then watch, which complements what I just read. Uh, it will then go on to the next page, maybe written word with another video or link to a blog post or website. You've combined all of these products into 
one particular item that can be downloaded. And I just think that's brilliant. I haven't seen anybody else in your industry do that. Uh, whose idea was that? Is this something that you came up with or do you have someone working at the company who brought in this inbound marketing expertise to A2, A2 uh, L Consulting? Well, there's a lot of people who are involved in the process and, and none of it's possible without good, high quality content as we keep coming back to. And the authors on our blog, are, that's really the essential fuel for everything that we do. Without that, it, it doesn't matter. You know, no, no amount of shouting is going to get people's attention. So with that, you know, going back to 2011 when we, when we first launched our blog, which now is, is this, I think maybe today, is about to cross 6,000 subscribers, which is amazing because we just hit 5,000 in September. So it's really just accelerating. Um, the Back then, uh, four years ago, um, this I took on the role of chief marketing officer as well as CEO, and it really we just hadn't done marketing before in any meaningful way, and this this was our first serious attempt, and and just my gosh, it's it's been so popular and so valuable, and it leads to fascinating conversations with people like you, with speaking engagements that we get involved with. But perhaps the most interesting thing that I've seen that is, in a lot of ways, shocking but but humbling and wonderful is when uh, a law firm calls us. You know, one of the top law firms will call us, and they'll just say, you know, just come in. We're we're going to use you guys on this next project, and then you go and you meet with them. First of all, that's a little unusual. There's not a RFP or bidding process, and like we already feel like we know you. You know, we, we've read, we've been reading what you say for the last couple of years, and people told me that would happen, and I didn't believe it when people told me that would happen, but it really is an amazing thing to be, as you said in the intro, developing a relationship, you know, virtually, where people are so much in the author's heads, and I, I read a bunch of the articles too, but people are so much in my heads when they read these articles that... You know, we really, they really do understand exactly what I'm thinking and some of the consultants, the jury consultants and the graphics consultants are thinking too. It's really interesting to watch. I mean, it's a, it's a great way to build relationships. It's a great, great way to have a bit of fun while you're, you're, you're building relationships. And, you know, to use the term marketing your company, I'm not a big fan of that term anymore. I don't like to be marketed to. Right. I do like... I do like uh, building and establishing new relationships and so the way you're going about it is very very effective and I think any particular company could, could follow this uh, this game plan should they decide to do so and I think they should. Ken, what do you tell uh, other business owners who you run into who ask you, well Ken, we, by putting all this content out there aren't you worried about maybe a lawyer or a law firm not calling you? I mean there's so much information out there they can go to your blog, they can read a couple of blog posts and try to figure things out on their own on a particular issue that they might otherwise consult with you on. What's your response to other lawyers or business people that have that concern with sharing the good stuff on social media? Uh, that's a great question. Thank you. Uh, the, and a lot of people worry about that, that, that sort of fear that they, they um, might be uh, serving up the secret sauce in some way. And the advice I got early on is, is um, the, you know, the more you share, the more you get in return. And I have come to absolutely believe that's true by uh, observing how people interact with us. You know, the reality is with the birth of the Internet, information started flowing very, very quickly. And so if your business relied on simply, you know, knowing a certain way to do something, um, I, I just don't think that's very sustainable. Um, the reality is it's the talent of, you know, jury consultants and litigation consultants that our people hire us for. You know, those folks who uh, bring something absolutely unique to the table. You know, what, what's interesting if you think about our market, uh, you know, we'll go to trial you know, 50, 100 times a year potentially. Whereas a, a lawyer at a, a large law firm, you know, who, who's um, a, a big name, maybe will go every couple of years. 
to trial. And it's, trial is actually quite rare for them. So that recognition of the way the marketplace has changed um, is, is interesting because you know, all of a sudden we're just, by virtue of going to trial so very often, we bring a lot of experience, not just from the advice we're giving, but from observing be the best trial teams in the country and how they, how they go to trial and being able to share those best practices amongst other firms. That, that's a fascinating uh, and uh, valuable thing that we're able to do. And by sharing those lessons um, a bit on social uh, and on our blog, I, I don't worry that we're really giving up everything because at the end of the day, there is nothing like the interactive experience of working with a consultant from a firm like ours. Uh, it's, we're really good, our consultants are really good, and it's, that is what we get hired for. It's not just for you know, a, a, menu, a menu list or a process. Uh, it really does require a lot of creativity to deliver the services that we deliver. Well, and you know, one thing I've noticed is a lot of people who uh, digest this information, they're not interested in doing it themselves anyway. What the lawyer's doing is he or she is looking at your expertise, your credibility, how you brought value to other cases, they then become sold on you and then the phone rings and they retain you. And I think that works for any type of business, any type of professional that's worried about the secret sauce, whether you're a lawyer, a doctor, a psychologist, an accountant, it's okay to share good quality information. People, uh, you know, when, you, when it comes around full circle to new relationships and new clients, it's really the only way to go about things today, I think, with social media and with the advent of the internet. I mean, to think that any other way is the way to go, you're probably shooting yourself in the foot. Let me just share an example of why it's good to put content out there. I have a, uh, a, a Google Plus blog, it's called Trial Lawyer Tips, and on that blog we have several thousand lawyers and people interested in the law sharing trial lawyer tips and as a result of your approach your inbound marketing approach and sharing all this good information we've developed a relationship and when I see one of your trial tip related articles come out you and I both know where that goes it goes yeah. onto the trial lawyer tips blog and so I'm taking you and A2L Consulting, I'm exposing you to lawyers, maybe several thousand lawyers, many of which probably know who you are, but some don't, and we're sharing your information with these attorneys that, that would not have otherwise been brought into your circle of influence. They like what they see, they click, they contact you, and they hire you for consulting services. So it also allows you to get your message to get your story out there in a way that might not otherwise be available so that good things will happen. And for me, that's the most exciting thing about what we're doing. I agree. You know, I, I look at the statistics on our, on our site and you know, fully half of the traffic comes from social media. Um, and mm -hmm. amongst that traffic, most of that's actually from LinkedIn. And then Twitter is the, the group that's making it up, and it's, it's passionate Twitter followers like yours that you know look to a thought leader like yourself to say oh and, and filter down really good information that, that is valuable to them. So uh, you know the, the power of social and being able to amplify your message and reach so many people in such a short period of time. You know again the ebook we launched today. You know by tomorrow, 700 people will have probably downloaded that. And you know another few thousand at least will have noticed it. Let me it. let me show. I printed out the ebook. Let's see if we can show it. <laughs> You're already Seriously. on top of it. Well done, Mitch. <laughs> and what's what's pretty cool is the uh, the tweet came out. I clicked on the link, and it's the Voa Dyer Handbook by A2L Consulting. 111 pages, 37 articles, and eight valuable tips for litigators and lit support. I mean, who would not want to read that? Um, I've practiced for almost 30 years. I've got a pretty good handle on what it takes to effectively try, it, uh, try a case and get a good, good result. But what I have found is when I dive into these types of uh, reports and similar material, I always walk away learning one or two new things that I didn't know before. So 
it's just a great way to connect with others to provide value and then you know it is indirect but indirectly you're 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 marketing your firm you're building new relationships it takes a certain type of mindset in my opinion Ken to approach business in this new fashion um, and so let me take you by the hand and go back in time a little bit and let's talk about that share with our viewers uh, a little bit about your early years your early experiences people you've met why uh, what do you think while growing up has uh, formed the frame of mind that you have that resulted in you a couple of years ago diving headfirst into direct uh, social media and inbound marketing well uh, you know I've always to go to go go into the um, the the, uh, the deep history you know, I, I've always been a bit of a rebellious only child and so even when I finished law school I, I, I just wasn't prepared to go into practice and as I said at the time you know mom dad I, I just don't want to be yet one more lawyer this year, you know. And they were they were a little confused when I moved back into their house um, at, at the time, but they got over that. You know, 20 years later, um, as as our firm has has grown up, um, we what I have found always, you know, it, it comes back to the, the the statement I made earlier. It, the more you share. Um, the, you know, in a way, the more people care, and the more that they're willing to interact with you. I mean, if you think about your, um, you know, the new friends that one makes, and you know, in a in a monthly uh, set of meetings and interactions, you know, the people you 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 connect with are those people who ultimately share a bit about themselves and are, are sort of real and show up. And I think the process of conducting inbound marketing and putting content out there it is quite precisely that. It's, it's sharing in a way that shows you really care and trust the people that you're communicating with. And, you know, as you say, I, I think it applies, you know, it clear, professional services is probably the last area that one would have thought this would have worked and been valuable to people uh, because people are busy and billed by the hour. Um, the, you know, uh, but, but it turns out that it's actually one of the most successful areas for someone to uh, apply, this, apply this approach. So, you know, I've always been more extroverted um, than introverted. I've always wanted to communicate. And I've always just found that uh, no, no one, no one is going to toot your horn for you, and you, you really have to find a way that is respectful and and interesting to others to share your message and share share the, the gifts that you've got. And, and you know the, the folks that work here have an amazing set of gifts, and so we're able to really highlight highlight some high quality talent by sharing their articles and what they write uh, and. You know, and people clearly respond to it in in droves. Well, you, and you mentioned a couple of early life experiences where, uh, you know, you're a little bit out there. You weren't afraid to take a risk. You know, I've had people ask me. Uh, we've been online since 1996. That's when our first Microsoft front page website went up, and I've been online ever since. Over the last couple of years, diving into video, putting myself out there doing shows like this where the video crashed, the audio doesn't work, <laughs> taking risks. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the downside is there, but the upside is tremendous. And the upside is you get to share your message with more people than you might otherwise be able to. You get to meet new people, make new friends online. I, there's a group of people that I probably talk to more online during the course of a week than half of the neighbors on my street and we, and we have a tight street so true. you know we all hang out together and we have a great great neighborhood but the fact of the matter is I talk I interact with other people online a lot more often so it's kind of a new dynamic it's like the uh, you know the teenager right <laughs> doing this you know uh, to communicate they're they're talking with someone you know, yes. I just talk with someone 
really, I saw you text with someone. Well, Dad, that's the way we communicate. Yes. So it's kind of like a whole new way of going about these things. And I think professionals that, that get it and, and buy into this new dynamic, um, this new method of communication, this new way of of communicating with other people using the digital platforms, they're the ones that are going to be around for the long term. They're the ones that get it. And it's kind of a shame when you look at a lot of professionals that, that aren't online, they're not sharing on social. Um, you know, it's just, I'm, I'm so tired of preaching that they need to do this. I'm at the point where I respect their decision, but I move on and I'm engaging with people like you who do get it, who are putting out great content the right way. By the way, can you share with our viewers, Ken, the right and wrong way to put out content? And what I'm talking about is, and you can elaborate if you would please, the stuff you put out is providing valuable information to the recipient, to me. You're not hustling me every time I read one of your emails. You're not asking me to call you and hire you every time I see one of your ebooks. You're actually doing just the opposite. How important is that to our viewers or to any other companies that might want to start using inbound marketing? Well, it, it's it's the entire game, and and if you think about the the history of um, sales for a moment, if we're all in the sales business one one way or another. If you if you think about sales, you know, sales guys used to show up at your door and throw some dust on the floor and then try to sell you a vacuum. Um, and then you know we figured out we can just put up a sign and they're not allowed to come in. And then they used to call you at dinner, and you know then we got caller ID, and you know sales guys can't call anymore. And you know then we tried we're we're gonna mass email everybody, but you know we all have spam filters now. And you know you you really if you're trying to sell something to me, it's it's almost impossible to get through our gatekeepers, um, you know out of the blue. There's just almost no way to do it. And that's true for most professionals. So if that's true, if salespeople who actually want to help solve a problem, you know, they really offer a valuable service, they want to help solve a problem, how are they going to get through? And, and the new reality is that they have to be invited in. They have to be invited in by someone that sees that they're trustworthy, that they're bringing value, and that they care about the person that they're addressing. And that is the world of inbound marketing now, which is really saying, okay, I'm going to let you in. You're going to come into my circle. I'm going to connect with you on LinkedIn. I'm going to interact with some of your content on a LinkedIn group. I'm going to like something on Facebook. Uh, and you know, as they start to raise their hand a little bit, you know, we notice, and you know, but we don't, you know, we're, we're not, we're not chasing them. You know, we're we're just. We notice that different people interact with our content you know, more and more and more. And as time goes on, we can see and we can actually judge pretty accurately when someone may be about to call us based on how much they're interacting with us. Um, it's, it's a fascinating thing to watch on the back end, but all of a sudden you see you know, they're downloading a few more things, they're interacting with the website, they're visiting certain pages on our website. All of a sudden, they're going to you know go over to the contact page and see where you know our various people are located. And, you know, those are all little clues. If they're investigating pricing or litigation consulting services, and you know, reading articles like what is it, what is it, what does a mock trial cost to conduct? You know, we now know that there's somebody seriously thinking about something, and in in their way of interacting with their con interacting with A2L's content they are in fact kind of raising their hand a bit and, and saying, okay, I'm going to trust you enough to maybe fill out a form to download something from you and share my email address with you. Um, and uh, you know, that it's, it's, a, it's a very authentic give and take that now goes on. And what I love about it is the buyer is now in control of when they're going to let someone in. And that's you know, just vastly different from the way things were five years ago. Uh, and uh, I think it's, it's for the better um, because you're able to use social and content to judge whether you want somebody you know, in your virtual house, so to speak, and whether you want them to talk to you over the dinner table.
It's all about the customer experience now. You know, as Brian Solis points out in What's the Future of Business, it's just, you know, it's all about creating that relationship, that customer experience. You know, it's interesting, a couple of weeks before the uh, holiday break, um, we had a client who had been communicating with us on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, connected with me on Instagram, and to make a very long st story short, I told my front office, this person will be contact. I have a feeling he's going to be calling us this afternoon to set up an appointment. Like you, I just felt it was time where he was going to be taking that next step, yeah. and sure enough, he did. And a lot of professionals watching this, you know, our incoming phone calls have probably gone down 60 to 70 percent by design. And instead, what's happening is people are contacting us through the website, through email, through 24/7 chat through the social media platforms, through some other things that we have set up. So it's accommodating the prospective client and making it easy for that client to get a hold of you the way they want to as opposed to the way you want them to. Real quick before I let you run, Ken, uh, just walk our viewers through just briefly how your content production process works. For example, let's say you have an idea uh, for a trial consulting issue, issue X, and it's in someone's head, we need to do a booklet, a blog post about issue X. Internally, how does that process work in your company from idea to finished product? Just walking us through it, through it briefly. Yeah, my pleasure. The um, Everything starts with um, an analysis of sorts of what the marketplace is looking for. and you know, fortunately, we have we have a lot of experience. So, uh, talking to customers, and we talk to customers, of course, on almost a daily basis. And what one piece of great advice I got um, early on that I'll share is, you know, what is all this blogging about? What do I need to write about? And and what what could possibly be interesting? And someone said, well, just think about every question that your customers have asked you over the years. Every single one of those questions is a blog post, and it's what does it cost? What's the value? Why do I care? How do we do this? You know, all of those pieces, and so it starts there, right? With re and again, it's it's creating a relationship with past questions and accumulated questions of of various customers and prospects over the years, and that's one piece. Piece number two is we're able to look at our search traffic and how people find our site. So, you know, a very real-time, uh, real-world example is, is this Wadir ebook that we just put out today. Um, the reason we put out a Wadir ebook is because seven out of the top ten searches that people used to find A2L Consulting's website in 2014 were related to jury selection of Wadir. Which to me is amazing because, quite frankly, you know, we were perhaps better known for a long time as the top litigation graphics company. So it's interesting to me that people are finding us by really searching Voidir and the, those sorts of terms. So we've been writing about these topics for years, and when we notice that there's a trend or, or there's a lot of search traffic, there's a lot of questions or perhaps there's something in the news about a particular topic, that's when we stop and we say, I think maybe we need to put together an ebook on voir dire. And then we curate, you know, we have a lot of accumulated content. We might add in some new content. Sometimes we don't have to. We can just really use, you know, we've got about four, 400 or so articles that have published so far. Um, and we're generally publishing at a rate of about two or three articles a week. So we're accumulating a lot of fascinating content on various topics. And so the voir dire book is about 30, it's 37 articles on the topic of voir dire and jury selection that was accumulated, put together in a certain order because it flows in a certain way that we think would be valuable to the reader. And uh, it's laid out in a useful way. As you say, there's... Um, embedded video that people can click to. There's links throughout that take them to other topics that they might have a related interest in. So it's you know it's a living document that, that people have. And, and so mm -hmm. it starts with the 
early conversations of what are people interested in at the easy, the easy sort of blog post level, and then when it's what are the big topics that are, people are really having struggling with, um, like voir dire. That's when we accumulate things and create a book. Okay. Let me uh, click back over here. I, no, Ken, that, I didn't mean I'm. We're trying to figure out Google Hangouts, or at least I am. So I apologize. I'm listening to what you're saying, but I wanted to make sure um, I had the right screen up while you were speaking. No, I mean, and that answers the question for a lot of people. Like, how do I? I don't have anything to write about. Uh, I don't know what I should be putting out there. And I think one thing Chad Barr. Uh, told me want to think of the top 50 most often asked questions that you're asked each week or each month and then write a detailed answer to each question. There's 50 blog posts right there. You can take those 50 blog posts and you can convert those into 50 videos. You can take those 50 videos and pull the audio out of it and turn it into 50 podcasts. Yes. You can repurpose all this content so that your efforts on one particular item are actually expanded to eight or different eight to ten different items if you go about it correctly. So it's really not that hard to get all this content together. It's just a matter of having the right mindset uh, to take those steps to make it happen. And I, that's what the exciting part is, I think. Agreed, Mitch. And you know, I, I, I don't want to end without really celebrating the work that you are doing. You know, I, I appreciate the pats on the back um, toward, towards me, but the work you're doing is is the kind of thing that all lawyers should be paying attention to because uh, it, it's I see your name every day and I'm always happy when I see it and you you, <laughs> you would be the first person I'd recommend if I'm out in California. For, there you go. So it's it's fantastic. Well done. Uh, well, thank you, Ken. I really appreciate it. And here's the thing: I actually enjoy what I'm doing. This is so much fun. The benefits have been awesome, and when I get a chance to to connect with someone like you who I would not have connected with had you and I not both dived into social, that's what makes it all special. So right back at you, it's been a pleasure and I really appreciate you taking time out of your day, Ken. By the way, everybody, I found out this morning following Ken on Twitter that his triplets have a birthday today. So make sure you tell the triplets that everyone from the digital world says happy birthday. Will do. They're, they're proud to turn seven. We're very excited. That is a great age. Enjoy every single moment. I know you will. And I was telling Ken before we went live, when we're done here, because it's all about family as far as I'm concerned, I'm heading out to watch my son play high school soccer. So we have an afternoon soccer game. So it's all good. Hey, Ken, before we go, um, can you share with our viewers if they'd like to get in touch with you, if they have uh, questions about uh, your consulting services, if they'd like to uh, connect and start getting these eBooks? this information like I've been getting for the last couple of years, what's the best way for them to go about it? If they want to find a way to stay in touch, they should subscribe to our blog. And you can find your way there by going to a2lc.com. And if you want to get in touch with me, which I encourage, uh, my email is lopez at a2lc.com. Or our phone number is 800-337-7697. And I appreciate it. It's nice to spend time with you, Mitch. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Ken, thank you very much. And if anyone has any questions about the right way to go about inbound marketing, to use social, uh, if you're a lawyer and you need a good consulting, litigation consulting company, Ken's your guy. I highly recommend you look them up. You want to contact me first and get the lowdown, please feel free. I'm very transparent, but I'm going to tell you everything. Uh, financially that's publicly here on uh, Google Hangouts. Hey Ken, before we go, let me just shout out as to some upcoming shows. Yeah, we have Ryan Fan on Friday. Digital strategy. Mitch, I'm actually I'm losing your connection there a little bit. So you you've got a little uh, robotic. Okay, I'm sorry about that. You're For back. those of you that can hear uh, we have Brian Fanzo coming on Friday. He'll be talking about Twitter and using Twitter chats uh, for professionals. That's going to be fantastic. Next week we have Professor Nicholas Meir who's going to be doing a Google Hangout with me from Prague. He's a local marketing and social media professor here at Chapman University and we're going to be talking about uh, all the good things that he's doing on social media and once again that's next week. We have Tim McDonald coming up, former um, 
uh, director of community service for Huffington Post Live. He's a friend of mine, and he's going to talk about social. And then, Ken, we have Guy Kawasaki and Peg Fitzger Fitzpatrick coming on on January 27th to talk about their new book, The Art of Social Media, which, by the way, is an outstanding read. If you haven't gotten it, I highly recommend that you pick it up. It's just a great book. So we have a lot of really cool shows coming up on the Human Side interviews. And uh, Ken, thanks for uh, jump-starting us in 2015. I appreciate you taking the plunge with me. We made it through the show in one piece. And uh, tell the triplets I said happy birthday and thanks for everything. I really appreciate it. Great talking to you, Mitch. Thank you for everything. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. All right. See you.